And welcome back. Uh, we are now at part five of this week's new comics, bitches. So let's get right on to it. Uh, X-Men Schism, part two of five. Uh, Jason Aaron knocking this one out of the park. I'm liking that he basically had all the scripts written and is just, you know, they're doing different art with different artists uh, each time instead of, you know, having to wait for those pesky deadlines, uh, which can be problematic, uh, as we all know. Um, you know, it starts out with, you know, they're in, you know, Iran, you know, saying, you know, given the call, no more units, they got the the Ahmadinejad. I mean, you know, Jason Aaron never comes out and says, well, this is definitely Ahmad, you know, Ahmadinejad, but you know that it is. Um, and so they've got the Sentinel who uh, basically is, you know, they're going to use to protect themselves from the infidel mutants. Um, and they turn it on and it starts malfunctioning and it starts, you know, killing a whole lot of people, uh, p potentially. Um, and, you know, Logan still pretty pissed um, about you know what happened last issue with Quentin Quire, uh, and he desperately wants something. He he's looking to stick his claws in something. <laughs> um, you know, so, he says something that bleeds will be best, but I'll settle for a damn robot. Uh, but you know, Cyclops is like, no, I need you know all of my you know my, my A team. Uh, here at Utopia, just in case uh, something really goes tits up on this. So, not that he would ever say tits up, but I'm saying it. Um, so, but we we cut back to uh, you know the Hellfire Club, and we've got you know this you know twelve year old uh, Cade Kilgore uh, who um, uh, who knows that seventy five percent of these Sentinels that are out there are totally defective. Um, and, you know, that the Hellfire is basically, you know, Hellfire Club is no longer going to be, you know, a club of mutants, it's going to be a club of humans. Um, but humans with uh, extraordinary wealth and, uh, some amazing technology. Um, and he's got his own, and Cade has got his own squadron of, uh, not squadron, but his, uh, cohorts are not a bunch of uh, hopped up mercenaries, they're all kids uh, that look like they have some pretty superific powers, or at least some pretty uh, incredible powers. Now, I don't know exactly who the aliens are that they're dealing with, although they do mention dire wraiths, and I do know those guys. Um, and uh, at one point, the Probably my favorite point of the comic is where uh, they send uh, a lot of the, the they send like for instance Rogue uh, and Kitty Pride to uh, to Iran to stop the uh, stop the Rogue the, the the bad Sentinel there and the you know and at one point you know Kitty you know Kitty says you know you know because the Aquadinajad feel shamed because they've sent women you know. And then she mentioned, you know, she says to him, did, you know, did I happen to mention that I'm Jewish? You know, because obviously Ahmadinejad is a, you know, a horrific Holocaust denier. Um, but, you know, they've got, you know, all, you know, a whole bunch of X-Men out, taking out all of the different Sentinels everywhere. Um, and, uh, you know, they, but, and then lo and behold, Quentin Choir just walks right in there. And says, you know, here I am. What are you going to do about it? Um, and basically, the first thing that first instinct that Wolverine has is to get him to Steve Rogers, so that uh, she, can, you know, so that he can put Choir away somewhere. Um, and uh, um, he, he's requesting sanctuary, sanctuary there on Utopia, um, but Cyclops doesn't want uh, Rogers or anybody else to get involved. He wants him to uh, 
basically stands trial at Utopia. He want you know he wants them to deal with him, uh, and not with the you know human courts. Um, and and that's I think we're starting to see the rift here between Cyclops and Wolverine is that Cyclops definitely you know he you know it, Logan sees Quentin as nothing more than a threat that needs to be dealt with immediately and Cyclops sees someone that needs to be dealt with but the only people really suitable to deal with him are other mutants um, so that seems to be really the beginning of the rift here and uh, but still Scott is not too happy about Choir being there either he actually threatens them to threatens to send him off to Atlantis and of course Choir is just being his uh, his little you know his little douchey self um, but then there's uh, the new mutant rights museum that's going to be opened in San Francisco uh, and Scott is wondering hmm is this going to be televised? Because if it is, we may be in for some problems. You know, whoever is striking at us may decide to use this as another opportunity. So he says, you know, he basically, you know, he sends, you know, Cyclops, or he sends, you know, Emma, he sends uh, Colossus, he sends Namor, he sends Magneto, and he sends Iceman there to potentially keep the peace in case something does break out. And then here comes the good old-fashioned Hellfire Club, uh, you know, kind of warrior uniforms they had, you know, the blank faces, which is the, you know, the eye slits and everything like that, and the mouth slit. Um, and Cade and his uh, uh, rather brutal young band are going to dress up, and they are going to, uh, quote-unquote, carve... Uh, you know, carve their names on the uh, the face of history as they plan to assault this uh, the the mutant rights uh, exhibition uh, at the at the museum. So I mean, it's just uh, you know, Jason Aaron really amping things up. Frank Cho doing some great art on this issue. Just you know, schism is, is is like it's wrecking my mind because I. I not only am I really invested in what's going on here, uh, and there's some great character moments, but, you know, it's just, you know, I, I can't wait to see what's coming next. And I'm glad that's not the only point of it, that it's just, you know, well, we're just laying foundation for what's going to come next. So, uh, so it's really good. So, um, you know, here we are kind of into... Like I said, it's been a really tough week as far as picking book of the week. Uh, these next couple segments here, because they're going to be at least two more after this. So yeah, that's right. You got uh, about an hour and a half uh, to to watch and to enjoy, hopefully. Um, so we've got uh, we've got American Vampire number seventeen. Uh, God, I love this comic. Um, I love this issue. Uh, we've got uh, we've got Hank uh, basically trying to bust his way out of uh, the uh, Japanese prison that he's at. The uh, uh, that's full of the uh, the Japanese uh, vampire. You know the uh, you know it's, it's full of these the vampires that can actually hurt Skinner. Um, and. Uh, you know, the, and him, you know, Hank and all, all the uh, all the vassals uh, and uh, and Skinner are all on their way out. And now, uh, you know, what they're trying to look, for, you know, trying to find a way out. But then they find basically a bomb that's filled with this blood, the blood of these vampires that they're planning on dropping on allied countries. And they know that this is a no-go. They've got to destroy this place. So they call in essentially almost a suicidal airstrike on their behalf, or for suicide for them, because there may be no way that they can get out in time, but they know that this is a mission that has got to be completed. They've got to stop these things. Um, 
and you know we have uh, you know some really exciting moments as far as you know the escape and as far as trying to get out you know they're out you know they're trying to outrun this uh, this airstrike um, this big huge bomb that is going to basically ob obliterate this base um, but one of the uh, one of these, uh, one of the ragtag uh, members here of this merry band, uh, has to make the ultimate sacrifice because um, basically the only way that they can uh, they can get out, and he himself actually is a vampire because they turned his son. He couldn't kill his son, and his son bit him and infected him, and he's planning on basically dying for, you know, to, to make sure that the rest of these guys are safe. But unfortunately, uh, not all of them make it. The only two that do are Hank and Skinner. Um, and, you know, and Hank is even th was thinking for a few moments actually about using the blood that Pearl gave him. Uh, to turn himself into a vampire so that he could survive this, but it broke. Um, so he really feels he's got no way out, but there's Skinner pulling, you know, basically pulling him out of the frying pan and into the fire, uh, because Skinner wants to put some serious hurt on Hank, uh, possibly because he's uh, he's jealous of the relationship that he has with, uh, with Pearl. Uh, but uh, Skinner's got a surprise in store. Um, coming for him, and his name is Pearl Jones. And just wow! I mean, so so. I mean, such good storytelling that Snyder does on this on this book. I mean, you know, and uh, Raphael Albuquerque. I mean, the way that he his art throughout all of these issues is is so gorgeous. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very it has a very painted look to it. Um. You know, this, you know, kind of a sketchy and painted and, you know, terrifying look to it. Um, you know, and it's, it's just, you know, American Vampire is just, you know, it's, it's one of the best books out there on the shelves. If you're not reading it, definitely start. Get, you know, get the trades, get yourself caught up, get the back issues, get, you know, do whatever you need to do because American Vampire this is definitely the best thing that Vertigo's got going on right now, um, and uh, you know it just it just it just won for best new series the the Eisner Award so and deservedly so because Snyder's been knocking this ball out of the park since issue one so you know there's not really I mean uh, you know. I, I, I can't say that there's really like you know that this issue is a good jumping on point or anything like that. You you do kind of have to get it from the beginning or else you're going to be lost. Um, because there's so much going on, there's so many intertwined uh, stories that are being told here. Um, I'm kind of glad in a way that Stephen King is off the book because I was enjoying the stories that Snyder was telling more than I was the Stephen King story, which is. Not to say that the Stephen King stories weren't really good, they just, excuse me, Snyder's were better. Um, so, again, another great issue of uh, American Vampire. Couldn't recommend it more highly. Uh, so now we're going to get into, again, we've got four more issues to go, two more segments, uh, and we're going to get to our, our books of the week. So, um, so stay tuned. Uh, we'll be, we'll be right back. Okay. See you in a minute.